you kind of got to go out and pound the pavement and try to knock on as many doors and make as many connections as you can. So for me, but before I would say call my big break, before I got my big break, which was getting agency representation, uh, I'd probably put in three years of doing local work and, and terrible, terrible work and really awkward situations where you're driving three hours to meet somebody in their garage who claims to be a video guy for some local thing and it's it's all weird stuff like maybe maybe that wasn't voiceover now that i think of it um yeah no but it it, it takes a lot of stuff going into it and uh yeah I, for me i put in a, a solid three years of just local not for broadcast stuff that uh you know you get paid pennies on the dollar kind of thing um before i finally felt like okay i'm getting my chops together and i can kind of go out and see where i can where i can go with this for me, in terms of getting my start, it was a little bit different because I was already pro I was producing, you know. So at least that gave me the foot in the door because I was already working at the company that I that was making the show, so they knew who I was, so I was able to audition. However, that was only two shows, and after that, I left and decided to pursue acting full time. It was very difficult because I didn't have that many shows under my belt. Nobody really knew who I was. I mean, and the people who did know who I was knew me as a producer. So some people actually were really afraid to let me audition or to let to hire me because I don't know why. They thought they thought that I would steal their secrets, like their company secrets or something, and, and give it to and so it was really, really tough. And or or they thought, oh, she must not be a real actor because she's a producer turned actor. So she must be a producer who just wants to be an actor, you know? So it was, it was really hard to get people to give me that first chance. Um, but then I did a few jobs um, and then did very well. And those directors who worked with me worked at other studios, would pass my name along. And then once I got into a studio or got hired, then they, you know, then they kind of saw my work and then they would just start calling. And now I think most people know me as an actor first, who also still does some production, casting, and directing, but the acting is like the main thing. Yeah, the tricky thing is also, even if you establish yourself as, I am a voice actor now doing this, there's so many different circles. Like, you know, I was doing a lot of anime work, and then to do Ninja Turtles, I didn't know anyone in four kids, and someone encouraged me to crash the audition, which is what I did, and I was very embarrassed. I was not at all smooth about crashing the audition. I just gave my first name, not my last. I couldn't remember the name of my friend's voiceover coach that recommended her. I was rubbish, but um, I got lucky and they cast me gay next Peter Laird because he wasn't at the audition watching me be awkward. He just heard my audition and went, oh, that's Leo. But um, but it's, again, having to establish yourself over and over again, even if you've established yourself once, you know, and then, and then doing Venture Brothers is a whole other circle of people. So, yeah, woo, it's fun. And so we're downtime to just the one last question from this chap who's been waiting very patiently. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, is there any role that you really wanted to get, but didn't? TV, you're auditioning for lots of different projects all the time. You, I mean, your job is to audition. So every time you turn on the television, you're you're seeing and hearing. If you listen to the radio, you're hearing all the stuff you didn't book. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like after a while, you just become numb to what you didn't book, and you go, "Oh well, I'll get the next one." But because you constantly you turn on like, "Oh yeah, a fresh hot sausage," and some other guy can <laughs> sing it, and you go, "Oh, I didn't book that one." You know, but I. I don't know. I mean, there's there's roles that I would love to play, but I would be completely wrong. I mean, I would love would have loved to have been Wesker from RE5 because he's just so a uh, bad guy. But I, you know, there's other guys who are so much better at doing that guy. So in in that way, I'm a fanboy for wanting to be these guys, but never could be kind of thing. Good. That was a good. No, that was a good answer. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Awesome. Right, well, I'm afraid we are now out of time. We're actually five minutes out of time, but... Um, 
So yeah, can we please just have a huge thank you and a big round of applause, please. Thank you guys, thanks for coming out. Thank you, and we're going to be signing for a little bit. Yeah, if you're going to be signing, if you want to sign with these guys, it's down at the Manga Stand, I believe, the Manga Entertainment Stand. So the voice in my ear just told me.